I think I should walk you through the different modules that I have. And let me start with the Flame Instruments Tact. So basically this one is by far my favorite Eurorack module. This is a rhythm sequencer, but not a step sequencer. Let me just mute my different voices and just keep those four tracks that are tied to my Rempel, which is a sample player. Great, by the way, but I'm going to come back to that and just let's hear that. So what's nice about this is, well, this is the rhythm brain of my whole system. I have eight outputs, gate outputs, eight CV outputs, four LFO, and right now I'm not even using LFO from the tact because I have the great Maestro from Acid Rain Technology. I'm going to show you very quickly what I like about that. And uh, let me just mute different. Let's keep this one, okay? So what I really love about that is like it's a recorder, it's a looper. So basically I could just like override like this and that's it. Let's imagine that I want to try a different beat here let's say a triplet, an eighth, and I'm going to put on old, okay? I'm going to say this track has the old parameter activated. So let's do the same thing, okay? But as soon as I release, nothing has been recorded. So you can jam or while you play live, Let's say you're like this, and you're like, hmm, I want to try something else here. Do I like this? I do like that. So I'm going to remove the hold parameter, and I'm going to record. See? It's crazy. And now that I'm getting used to that, I can always change the different beats here and record or try with the whole parameter different combinations. This is extremely, extremely playable for live performances. So this is why this is my brain here, because this is a performance case. And I was looking at getting the ideal sequencer, and I've tried a few. I have the Bitstep Pro, I have the Tip Top Circadians, Circadian Rhythms, you can see here also I have a Steppy, and right now Steppy is patched to it, but it's not doing anything right now. Everything comes from that. And there's different things you can do with this. You can have different last steps per track. You can have different variations, which is basically probability. You have velocity if you're using the MIDI output, and this is what I'm getting at with this. I paired it with the Rample. Because the Rample has a MIDI input. The only issue right now is that this is a MIDI type B output and this is a MIDI A input. So basically I will order an adapter. So I will be able to change the velocity of the different samples here. And you know what? Why not start with this? So let me just start that again. So we just hear percussion here, which is basically the rample. So let's try the fourth channel here and see how many samples there are within that channel. And why multiple samples? Let's try to find something very interesting here. We'll try to find If you listen properly, you have three different variations of the same instrument here, which is something like a noisy i-hat. You have three dots here basically saying, hey, you have three samples. I randomize basically which sample is triggered. You can have up to 12 samples per channel. So this is really, really, really powerful. What I wanted for my system is something like this that allows me to create realistic 
percussion. I like the human feeling of a drummer playing on the on a drum or different types of percussion. What you want to try to get is a tool that allows you to basically replicate how the real life works. Basically, when you hit on a snare, when you hit a snare like this, each strike isn't going to sound exactly the same. So that's very powerful. And you can also modulate velocity here. So not only the sound of the hit will be different, but also the volume per se. So there's no drummer in the world who plays perfectly to the point of having the same exact sound and velocity ever. These rhythms here can get very, very, very complex. And what's interesting with that, and then let me put that on mute. What's very interesting with that is it's very fast and easy to create complex rhythms or to override them or to add fills or to change the variations, create transitions and everything is tied to that, not just percussion. But let's go back to this and unmute Hopefully it's gonna sound well. See it's happening down here. So it's gonna choose the here we have just two samples, but it chooses between the two randomly. So just hear how it's already more humanized. I mean, you can use this for percussion, you can use that as a complete voice, basically, because it also tracks one volt per octave. If you set the parameters correctly, you can have, like I said, 12 different samples per channel. So you can imagine here what you can do with that. And by the way, the length of the samples are insane. You can have, I don't remember how many minutes you can get per sample, but it's a lot. I mean, it's huge. So you could basically build the whole song with just this, with smart, let's say, planning, because you can, of course, integrate your own samples into that. And well, sky's the limit basically with this. So these are the key ingredients in my system, at least for the rhythm. It takes care of everything. And this takes care, well, for me, it takes care of the percussion. We have a make noise math here. I don't think I need to walk you through that right now. I'm not even using it for envelopes, although it's already patched because I have a clear patch note and you're going to have a link in the description to see that patch note, but I'm probably going to show it. Now, before I move forward, you can see that everything is properly planned. So whenever I have to go somewhere or start from scratch, patching from scratch after, I don't know, after some exploration, because sometimes I want to use this system to do more than just performing and can get very complicated to get the same patch or let's say the same core idea. Um, that's why I'm taking notes of everything I do here. I have some flexibility. I have some freedom into how I patch things, but most of what you see on the screen is always going to be as is. So like I said, the make noise math, you know it. It's more than just two envelopes. You can do a lot with this. Uh, you, you know it. I'm not going to go too deeply uh, about this. You know how it works. So basically right now I'm mostly using the knobs as offsets to macro control a few different things. I might consider removing this and replacing that with something else. Right now I leave it there because as it's my performance case, it's also the case I work with for my videos or my music and things like that. And math is a very, very powerful tool. It does a lot. It's a function generator. I always kind of like need it for different reasons. So here we have Mzurak Quad. And by the way, thanks to Squarp for sending me this. What I'm saying about that is totally honest, transparent. It's not because they sent it over to me that I'm that my opinion is biased. It's a great tool. I replaced my Salempo, which is much bigger, which is to me more limited and not as well. If you want the human feel, you cannot do much 
with Salampo. With some creativity, you can always go far, but not as far as with this. So thank you, Squarp, for sending me this. And I say that because also Mzurak sent that over to me. I needed some kind of um, ideal CV sequencer brain in my system. And this is it. You have four channels. You have clock division which is great because I had a clock divider, but I feel like sometimes like a quad clock distributor from 4MS, as long as it's a very great module, had to be taken out because it's taking too much space. So basically here I have four divisions and it's, it's here. And you can see basically here are my divisions. I'm sending that to multiple places. So I'm using this clock division. One thing is like the, you don't have the snapping, the clipping. Well, what I mean is like whenever you turn an arm, sometimes you, you feel a click that indicates that you're on the next value. You don't have that here, so you have to go by feeling and things like that, which is fine. Uh, a performance system in your rack for me is something you discover while you play. Um, there's an element of surprise to the audience, but also to the player. This is what I really love about that. If I want to have full control over everything, I would not be in your rack. It's possible, but to me, feels like it's not the idea behind your rack. So anyway, here you can change the different patterns. Just gonna mute a few things and maybe just skip the bass and start playing this. So what you hear is just the first row, which is sent to some kind of a mixer here with attenuators. So basically here it's the, the height of notes. So I can go high like this. And if we have a note that's high like that, you're going to hear something like this. But if you go down here, the height of the notes are not as high. And I could even invert here because this is basically an attenuverter section, which is the LACA by Satanic Synths. Unfortunately, this thing is discontinued. A very great, very great module. Basically, you have four channels, four inputs. You have offsets here, which is not necessary for my system because all my CV values or CV signals are getting into here. So these three at the end are not useful because I'm using the sum. So the four channels are summed together to create all my melodies. And I'm going to go back to that. You have four sequencers here. There are four outputs and these are mute switches. So I can merge at that point, the different values here, the different CV sequences. Every time I mix them and I can even like invert, let me just demo it. Maybe with just a little bit of drum so it's not as drab. So like I said, everything here is summed together. So I turned on three channels here. So let's keep it at one. And this is basically the first channel is where I send my summed CV sequence. And the three others using the Ornament and Crime Quentermain app, which is basically a very, very solid quantizer. The three channels are using what's in what's sent here, basically. So all of my three channels are getting the same CV sequences. But what's very cool with this is that I have, not this channel, different active nodes. And I can basically change the chords because th these are basically chords. I can change the chords with this here. So if you look, uh, not this one, I'm sorry. So pay attention to this. I'm going to turn a single knob and you're going to see what's going to happen. So it's like transposing chords, if that makes sense. And what's even more interesting with this is I pair this quantizer with a precision adder, which is basically adding an octave or subtracting an octave. But I send the three different 
channels into individual input. If I do this, it adds an octave to the two channels here that are playing different notes, creating in the end different summing. What I mean by that is if this plays a C, the first channel, and this plays a D, you're going to get the addition of the two. But you could subtract. And add another one. So these are basically different ways different ways of creating melodies. I can play with this, merge different sequences. I can even play this here like that. I can even decide to have different divisions. It's gonna go faster. I didn't talk about that, which is like a the pattern section, which is basically it tells this sequencer how to move between steps. So basically when you're kind of like at zero, you go in a very linear way. And if you change it, you see you have different patterns. This is just it. And you have one knob for each channel, but you also have a master pattern knob here, which is basically gonna change the four channels at the same time. This is excellent. This is, I love that. And you see here, this portion here, is my CV sequence section. It's quite huge, but it's very powerful. I can keep things simple. So here basically you just get the first quantizer, the first channel only. And then as you mix things up, you get in a realm that is probably more reminiscent of jazz because you end up having scales that are very, let's say, surprising, unique. I don't know how to say that. I, I really don't have the proper word here, but you can have a bunch of shady scales playing here. Also with that chord transposing knob, if you will. And on top of that, here right now, not sure I'm gonna use the key step for my performances, but this is sent here, which is basically adding, if I press the C key, it's going to transpose to the C. And if I go to G, it's going to transpose to G. So this is another way to, let's say, more classically transpose the, the whole thing here. So I have an extremely interesting and diversified CV sequence system. I have the powerful acid ray technology Maestro, which is basically a controller and you can build your own LFOs. You can say, hey, for this first channel, I want it to be bipolar. I want it to be smooth. I want a 16th. I want it to be an up ramp. And I'm like, well, you know what? I want something else now. I want it to be a triplet. 16th and let's say a down ramp this time and then you can save it by tapping chain you say hey i want it to the first channel and let's just see how it looks like i'm gonna start so you have the indicator here of course and basically this is what i've created and then it's highly jammable as well so as you can see i have things that are highly jammable just the just pushing this a little bit is going to change the melody. Just flipping this is going to change the melody even further. Unmuting, changing one thing here, tweaking the knob here, doing one manipulation here with the beat or single shots with off beats. And I, I, you see where I'm getting at, basically. I want each manipulation of a knob or of a button to have as much impact to everything as possible. And I think I'm getting closer and closer to that vision or to that mission that I've given myself because I want this to be always surprising to me, to the audience. I mean, that's that. So basically here, like I said, you build your own LFOs, if you will. Basically, when you hold the high button and the mute button at the same time, I enter the attenuation parameter. So the first 
channel is activated here. If I go there, now it's attenuated, let's say halfway. And if I tap on this one here, it's almost like 100% attenuated. You're almost not gonna see much about that. But if I remove it, it's 100%. You can do a bunch of things here. You have 14 channels, which is basically, I could save, decide to save my six, my six LFOs into channel one, let's say to bank one, or let's call that a bank, it's more accurate. So you can load, you can save, and this is also highly jammable. You can decide to activate another bank that's gonna make your whole system sound really, really different without having to create everything from scratch, but you can also create everything from scratch. And this is instant, the transitions are smooth. This is also the case with this. If I want to change the bank for a transition, it's like instant. Whereas with this Salem poll before, there was a loading phase that was well done, by the way. So you could create some kind of like transitions between your samples because they would load one after the other for big samples. But you know what? I wanted something that was more responsive. So that, that was the way to go. Thanks for Acid Ray Technology for sending that to me. There's a link in the description because I covered this in a review and demo video. So if you want to know more about that, go ahead. Same thing with Satanic Synths, Laka. This thing is called Laka. Thanks to Jack, very cool guy. He has very interesting modules such as the marsupial filter. This thing is crazy. This thing is crazy. It's small. It does a lot of surprising things. It's not your typical filter. You know what? I'm not, I'm not gonna cover this right now. I'm getting ahead of myself. Infinite Machinery sent me three modules, 2131 VCO, a very reliable VCO. This thing doesn't move, man. When I tune this thing and I walk through the different octaves, this thing is very precise. This is by far my most precise VCO. I have the Dixie 2, which is also very precise, but I had to send that over to IntelliGel, which they, by the way, thank you IntelliGel, they tuned it for me and sent it back over to me for free. That was very cool. So anyway, Infinite Machinery, they sent me this VCO, this envelope generator, which is basically an ADSR or an AD, depending on if you trigger it to trigger the AD envelope or the gate to go through the four steps. You also have a manual trigger here, the attack out and the envelope out. This is very cool, simple. I have also a video of Infinite Missionary. So if you want to know more about those three modules, there's a link in the description. But before I finish with Infinite Missionary, I also have the EXA VC. This is basically six, six channel VC. Very straightforward, this acts as an attenuator, so it's not like the quad VC from IntelliGel where you can craft a tone and add character to your sound with different knobs and switches. This thing is just input, your CV input, and then your output. And this is just a level. If it's like that, you're not gonna hear anything. So you could also use that as a mixer at the same time. Straightforward. Straightforward, very affordable. I don't remember the amount of HP. I'm not gonna try to lie here and say something that's not accurate, but it's very, very thin for a six VCA module. So highly recommend they're built in a sturdy way, very reliable. Good job, Infinite Machinery. And thanks again for sending that over to me to, to test them and provide transparent, honest review about that. So again, link in the description if you wanna know more. Here, this is my first design module. I designed that with Erzlich Labs with LB, which is a very great partner. Thank you, sir, for making this happen. This is basically an attenuator that you can reverse because you know what? Sometimes you want your inputs and outputs at the top like this to declutter the part at the bottom so it's easier to, to interact with because I use that as a mixer. It's intended to be used as a mixer. These are clickless mutes. And if I want that at the top, for some reason, I don't know, my controller might be at the top here and my mixer can be at the bottom and I want to send that down. I can revert it like that, but what's nice is behind you have a switch that would basically invert the control here. And we also printed the reversed side of the plate. So if you want, you can reverse it, flip the switch and change the side of the faceplate to always have this being readable properly. Very cool, I'm very happy about that. So you can buy that on my website, link in the description. There's also a new bundle, including three Mapnea, because this is called Mapnea, 
you have three of them plus a two HP mixer from RZ Labs with tiny case built for the three Matnea. So maybe you don't have enough space. You want to take out your mixing capabilities and put that there. So again, this is also on my website if you want to order and that's not going to be relevant in the future. But right now it's on sale. If you're looking for something that's straightforward, by the way, this is a 2HP module. I have four here, so you can have as many as you want. I'm probably going to replace the noise complaint, the quad normalized attenuator again from Cytonic Synths that I'm currently using as a mixer for my percussion and maybe add four other 2HP Mapnea to do the same thing, to basically have all my mixing capabilities on that side. This is also a good module. It's straightforward with mutes. This is just a good attenuator from Cytonic Synths. And thanks again to Jack because he sent the LACA, the noise complaint to me, and the Mars Supil. So very good products. He also has different things on his website. So go visit his website. You have a link in the description. I have the expert sleeper here. This thing is a game changer. One could think that it's maybe not the best tool to play live because... It's meant to facilitate the work you do with the DAW. Because basically here I sent each individual voice to an individual channel that I mix individually in my DAW. When you go live, you might do that and use your computer. And then from your computer or audio interface, you send your final audio to a big mixer. But you can also use the two jacks here to send the mix. And you kind of have internal mixers that you can set up yourself with the tool that you can have on your computer. You can say, I want this pan left, I want this pan right, I want this to be halfway in terms of volume, so on and so forth. So you have an internal mixer, so it sounds as you want. And I also have a headphone output. You have other inputs here if you want to trigger things in VCV. This is cool because you can use VCV as well. At the same time, you can receive, let's say, an LFO from VCV, or you can send your pitch information to VCV, and there's a communication back and forth. Or you can also use Ableton Live to get LFOs, for example, from your DAW. So like, if you want to mix your system and your DAW in a very deep way, the Expert Sleepers ES9 is a great, great, great tool. Not the cheapest, but if you want to invest long-term this is very good. There's also the ES8, which is smaller. I think there's eight outputs and a little bit less inputs. But if you have a smaller system, this is also very great. But if you go on the long run, I would recommend this. I have the After Later Quarv, which is a function generator similar to math. I have four channels instead of two. The outputs at the bottom are normalized, so you have a sense of mixing capabilities. I have the filter here, the marsupial. I have covered this with the LACA and the noise complaint in a video, so there's a link in the description. If you're looking for a small filter, I strongly recommend that. If you want character and you want to play with a filter that goes beyond your classic band pass, low pass, or a high pass, although this doesn't have high pass, it has band pass and low pass, it goes far, man, because you have like a switch here which is parallel or a series. Hear it just for fun. Sometimes it tends to act like as a resonator. This thing is, is gorgeous. You can have your classic filter type of behaviors but you can also really transform your tone in different ways, just like you heard right now. So there's the Soundforce dual filter, very straightforward, compact, and you have two CV input, and you have resonance input, and you have, of course, just one out per filter, but you also have two inputs per filter. So like, you can do a lot, and this is straightforward. If you want like crazy character, this is not what you want, but if you just need a filter that's compact to merge it, for example, with the XPO, which has a bunch of different stereo outputs with different waveforms, this is great because I can basically send, just with this and this, four different waveforms. So basically I could merge two different stereo outputs with different waveforms. 
And I also mix that with the IntelliJ Mixer because I mix other waveforms to it and I can decide if I mute one of them or change the volume for crafting tones because I use this as a, let's say an ambient voice that's usually in the back of the song with some crazy reverb and things like that. This is a very cool setup. It takes a lot of space. I love the XPO, but I'm wondering if I'm gonna move forward with this, but for now it's great. I'm not gonna walk you through this too much, but you have very interesting modulation that you can do here. You can do a bunch of good things here with this. This is very powerful. People vouch for it. The Bokuma since Sumo Visio and the Esquivel. Thanks again for sending that over to me. They take a lot of space, but in my system, they do something very interesting. I have a patch note that maybe I'm gonna show here that explains how I use it. Basically, I sync it to my Dixie 2. My Dixie 2 receives the pitch. It controls that part of this flow because it sends two different wave shapes, a saw and a square, and sent into the linear FM and the hard sync or soft because there's a switch. That's very cool. If you want something that's more dirty, the soft sync is interesting. And then basically this acts as, let's hear it. I use it as a bass right now. So if you listen to that, this acts as like, a harmonic filter and I can automate this by sending an LFO or whatever into the CV input which is basically what I did here with an untamed VCO you can do a bunch of different things here and more dirty if it's soft So it's very cool. What's also nice about this is like there's a mixer. So basically you can say my triangle, my saw or my square outputs. This is the amount I want from each of them. And then you have a fourth one. You can send any audio here. And I use that with the sub from the IntelliJ. So I get a thick, a very, very, very thick, harmonically rich tone by mixing these two. And mixed with the filter here i have three inputs so i also send different waveforms from either dixie or sumo here and can decide whether well i want more of this waveform or the other i like to call that my complex vco it's kind of like the beginning of what could be a complex vco with a filter that also allows you to shape and craft your tone in different manners you also have two different inputs here and three different filters. You have pen pass, you have low pass and high pass. And there's a cue here that has a little bit of character. So this is not the most characterial filter, nor is the dual filter, but the marsupial is. But sometimes, you know, you don't always need a character. Great tools, very good if you want to do something like that. I would strongly recommend it. And I have the pebble here from Zurak also. He sent that over to me, so thank you, Zurak. I'm not using this in my system right now. You can send two different LFOs here, and depending on how this thing is set up, you're gonna see the CV here going up and down, and as it crosses, this is gonna generate a trigger, either by only passing up or back and forth. So you can create like interesting triggers. This is the Xode PV44 with its expander which is a patch programmer. Depending on when these columns are triggered, the channels are going to send different values. These are fixed values, unless you're sending LFOs here that are also mixed. If you wanna see more about that, I also have a demo. The link is in the description. A very, very, very great tool for me. That was a, a very nice discovery. When I discovered that, I discussed with Xode. They sent me that and to my surprise this is very interesting so thanks for sending that over to me but what i want to say about that is it's very cool however i don't have the system right now to make the best out of this i can send the different outputs to filters and things like that but this does the job very well with immutable instruments plats or a noise engineering bia 
because basically you can turn those very small voicing tools into multiple voices kind of like at the same time. You could basically have a jam with four different voices with only this and a plats and a way to trigger this incredible tool. And like, again, there's a link in the description if you want to watch my review and demo video. There's the IntelliJ Steppy, a great, probably one of the best one you module ever like no wonder because IntelliJ are basically the king of one U modules. I also have here the quadrat, which is a quad attenuator or attenuverter. That's also a mixing, summing, or let's say normaling. And you have switches for either unipolar or bipolar signals. I have another ornament in crime and this is key. So I should have talked about that when I was discussing this part here. What does it do? It's also a quantizer. And what's crazy about that, it's a quantizer after a quantizer. It doesn't sound intuitive, but bear with me. It is very interesting. What I needed after this here, it's not after the quantizer, it's after the precision adder. And I could have a precision adder after this, by the way, because when you mix these things, like the values are so tight that you could basically create different notes even after a quantizer. It's very reliable. This is why it's called a precision adder. This is after the precision adder. So basically what it does here, I'm using the calibrator app created by Chris Mayer. Good job, by the way, this is very cool because I needed two things. One, I needed a sample and hold to hold my values while I switched here. Because what happened without a sample and hold, I would switch here, you would hear glitches, like melodic glitches. And I just basically needed a sample and hold. I got this to get a simple and hold. At the beginning, I tried the simple and hold app only. And of course, I remember that a simple and hold is not precise. My notes in the end would not be in tune. And I needed another quantizer. I was like, wow, this, this, this is probably too much. And then someone reminded me that there was the calibrator app, which allows you to use that quantizer as a simple and hold and as a calibrator. And a calibrator is very important if you really want to make extremely tight melodies. What I mean by that is, for example, the XPO. I like this VCO, but what I don't really like about that is it doesn't track octaves super well after two. The third octave, it starts to be detuned. And with the calibrator, you're allowed to calibrate the quantization in a way that allows you to browse more octaves without being detuned. It turns the XPU into something that, like I said, browses a lot of octaves without detuning. Very, very great. If I wanna go crazier on top of that, I could have another precision adder after this. And then one last thing, I have again, an IntelliJ buffered multiple, which is basically allows you to multiply a signal, audio or pitch information and protect the exact value. Imagine that you send a CV sequence here that is quantized. You absolutely need it to be buffered to be able to multiply this CV information to send over all the one volt per octave input without creating a melodic mess. I would like to also thank Bosswood Creations who made this very nice incredible work of art. He created my performance case. He built it with his own hands with beautiful wood and abalone, as you can see here. There's also like graphics behind the case. Look at this, man. The work on that is just insane. Mm -hmm.